all this. Oh, look at here. Pop. Guess who's in the dip? power. Oh, no. Kitties are in the dip. It's Zelda. Oh, That's a lot of ice cream. Pooh and yeah. Cat Lover. I miss some. Uh-oh. Helen, Tina. So it's midnight. Max. KB's on and Jack's five, almost 500 of you. Oh my gosh. Isn't that awesome? And Rose. Rose, you got my message. Yep. To Debbie, dear. Happy, happy, happy New Year to everybody. Respect. Oh my gosh. And Stripey's on. Lucy, Jezzer. Open wide. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's a, and we have a veggie. A veggie one too. Hi, Jim. There's a lot of them. There's on. Auntie Beth. Yep, I seen Beth. Shari, Kitty Cat. Boy, I just think a half hour more I was sleeping. <laughs> I even I went to bed. I couldn't sleep. Oh gosh, you did? You did? I did it. You didn't get any sleepy? No. Mm -mm. Uh. -uh. The kitties are fine, aren't they? Spike, the spikers looking like, what the heck is going on? Uh, they didn't like what Jackie did, though, a couple of years ago. What did you... Oh, um, what was that I did a couple that? years ago? Um, was it those popper things? It was something loud. Yeah, I think it was those popper things that does the confetti and it had the noisemakers with it. Yeah. Oh my God, Jackie! You guys, come on! Are you supposed to do that, C dot? Well, Mary, you better come eat, Mary. I'm I'm eating a blizzard. Sorry. The, a blizzard? Oh, 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 oh! Ice cream beats vegetables every day. Of the well, week. I have to. Well, that no. was uh, happened to be so. that was Sparrow that took That's that it. off of there. Sparrow, did oh. you do that? Can I have cauliflower? Or are they allowed to eat that? Are they allowed to eat that, Jackie? Uh, yeah, they can have that. Mm -hmm. that okay, well then, there you go. Have at it. Have at it, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I've been pinning my dinner on the stomach again if I have to. I know. <laughs> so. Hi, everybody. Hey, for for those that are new, because I, I had a phone call in there. For those that are new, um, the wobbly kitties are okay. They're not hurt. They're not injured anything like that there is cerebellar hypoplasia and there's different levels of it mild to moderate to severe and there is something they're born with it's a neurological thingy and um they're fine they're happy they're wonderful they are they do what they're gonna do <coughs> yep Ringo is doing okay. I guess since I'm going to read I and I'm sitting way over here, I can take my mask off. Um, Ringo's okay. He's. Did you see him tonight, Mary? I held him for about 15 minutes. Was he okay? Mm -hmm. I think he's a little, oh, like, overwhelmed a little bit of what the heck happened. <laughs> Yesterday I was outside fending for myself, and today I have a, this. But I think he's going to be okay. He's, he seems to be a nice, a, a, a real mellow boy. Was he, was he laid back for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I know you've had snackers, and the rest, other snackers are going to be in the ball. Yeah. Can you guys see the ball? Yeah, we played. Oh, yeah, there. They're having fun with that broccoli. Oh, in, in Spiker Doodle. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me grab something else too while we're waiting.
wondering what the heck that is. You got to play it. <laughs> like this. I did? On this side. Oh. There Hi there, little boy. You have to turn the light off for a second. Oh, Barbara, are you okay? Yeah, what? You can turn it off now. Okay. Huh? Is that the same one? Same person? Oh, it's a phone now. Oh, wow. You're going to have to stay out here. Mary, is this an automatic ball drop? Automatic when we lower the string, <laughs> yeah. People oh. automatic. And then Jackie pulls the plug. Oh, okay. On 2020. Okay. There Jackie you go. The string. Okay. Now you all can say you were disco cool. in it tonight. If somebody says, what did you do at New Year's Eve? You could say, I, I went to a disco. It's interesting, the lights, how they are on the side. Yeah. Of the screen. Yeah. On, on the, on the cams? On the monitor, yeah. Yeah. The All right, you little one. Oh, well, look at Matt. Did you see Magic in the shadow down there by the door? Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Come on, you. You. You, you, you. What are we going to do with you? We are supposed to be careful. Being careful. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to a disco and didn't have to get dressed up. It's kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? It's like a campfire where you want to just stare. Yeah. Yeah, Eloise Now who? <laughs> now Eloise is down there too. Yeah, rooms enough for two servants. Uh -huh. And I threw away the top. I have um spiral. Spiral. Yeah, where where is Happy? He's usually the one asking about a, about the different lights here. <laughs> okay, well let me get get the lights back on and we'll get started. Oh my gosh, Jackie, you're gonna be on time. I'm gonna be on time. Yeah. Okay, little girl. Little girl, little girl. What? No, I thought I heard it. Your tongue always freezes oh, at the wow. wiggle. <laughs> you guys want this down there for a little while? Oh, I don't think it'll reach, kitties. We'll, t we'll turn it on again later for you. Oh, Tanya, I know. You're, no, I know Auntie Mary's giving you some. Probably Auntie Barb, too. Uh, it's just not enough. Yeah, it's never enough, is it? Mm, see, if you were here, we would share. We always like to share with you all. Yep. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I smell photo strawberries. I can smell the strawberries. Hey, Barb, do you like fruit? I do, but I'm so full. I had that. We were taking that in for your smoothie in the morning. Yeah. Oh, pineapple would be good for, oh, for a smoothie. Would be very good. And the vegetables for the kids. Yeah, yeah. they go like that. For sure. Hi, Coralie. Hey, There's my baby girl. Hi. Fine. Coralie. All right. I think we can get started. Oh, yeah, it's 11. 
Well, um, I discovered the other day when I was, I've been cleaning out cabinets and cupboards and things and I realized that we missed two stories of Cindy G's and uh, she did this one in May and it's, it, it, you might have noticed on some of the stories we read, she refers to Coralie as the cosmetologist. This is the story that backs that up. And then the other one is Hensley, the professor of paperology. She did this one in May also. And I don't know how I missed these two, but I certainly did. She does that. So we'll, we'll give a good read. She does that? She, I'll tell you what, she does like that baby cat. Yeah, there, there's Coralie. All right, you ready? This is your story night, So, because I know... Um, uh, it, Uncle Billy Pogo was here too. I'm gonna try to get out of your way a little bit so you can see the kitties better. So Coralie, the cosmetologist, and these are these are all stories by Cindy G. She's the one who's made even the Christmas ones and a whole raft of them, and has made the books. Now these this what I'm reading is not in a book form or er, book available. It was the beginning of a new week and Coralie was working on getting her license to be a cosmetologist. See, she knew, that's why she came out. <laughs> she has to pass an exam and needs to practice, so she recruits the FFRC residents to help her out. One morning, Coralie was talking with the gang and she asked if they would be willing to help her get her cos cosmetologist license. Sure, they said. What do you need us to do? Well, I need to practice, so I need some willing participants. Vernon spoke up and said, I could use a trim and a shave. My girl Marilyn likes me soft as, ba as a baby's behind. I could use a pedicure, said Kiara. Yeah, and I could use a new hairdo, said Magic. Great, she said. I really appreciate the help, help guys. Who is first, asked Coralie. Any volunteers, she asked. Immediately, it got quiet. They were a bit nervous. Anyone? Okay, then I will pick. You're first, Vernon. Oh boy, he said. She took him over to the sink and washed his fur. I remembered this from my Valentine's date, he said. Magic and Rachel got me all spiffed up. She shampooed his fur and then, here, Coralie. She wants to be Come here. You want to be with your mama? Oh, and there's my other boy. <laughs> my other one. <laughs> well, no, he's uh, all of them are my babies. I say, see, I got out of that one, Barb. <laughs> um, oh boy, he said. She took him over to the sink and washed his fur. <clears throat> I remember this from my Valentine's date, he said. Magic and Rachel got me all spiffed up. She shampooed his fur and then conditioned him unlike when the boys washed him. He ended up looking like a blowfish. I remember that. When he was rinsed, he climbed out of the sink and sat in the chair. Ready, Vernon, she asked. I'm ready, he said. She pulled out the clippers and proceeded to trim a little off the top. And then she asked him to stand up, turn around and put, and put his bum in the air. What? He said, I want to trim your bum so it stays squeaky clean. <laughs> that sounds like what we tell the kiddies. Turn around. You might have to have your bum shaved. He stood up and spun around so Coralie could continue. She buzzed a per perfect circle. There you go, Vern. Is there any way I can get a mustache? He asked. Hmm, let me see. I will look in the bag of items we can use. She opened it up, and sure enough, there were three different styles. Which do you like, she asked. I want to look like a celebrity. Try this one on, said Coralie. No, not that one. How about this one? There's a toupee, Vern. You can't put that on. <laughs> he tried to put his toupee on his, as a, as a um, mustache. There's a, that's a toupee, Vern. You can't put that on your face. You will look like Sasquatch. He held it up and made a growling noise. 
She just shook his, her head and said, pick one of these. He picked up a small one that fit perfectly. He looked in the mirror. Wow, I look handsome. I like this one, he said. Okay, then you are all set, she said. I'm going to go show Marilyn and see if it drives her wild. Next, said Coralie. Magic came forward. What would you like, she asked. I want a new hairdo, hairdo that would go with my and D-Man's radio show. Any suggestions? I could spike your fur and dye it a cool color. Okay, I'm game, he said. Rachel just looked at him and said, You're crazy, Magic. I need style, D-Man. I need to look the part, not just the voice. Rachel shook his head and went to go lay down. Coralie took her magical spray bottle and filled it with warm water. She spritzed his fur and then with some hair gel and a comb, she formed a train of spiked fur all the way down Magic's head and back. She took out the hair dryer and turned it on medium heat to dry it so it would harden and get stiff. Want a sneak peek, she asked. Sure, said Magic. She spun the chair around and held up a mirror. Whoa, that's cool, he said. What do you think, Derecho? I think you look like a dinosaur, and he laughed. Now for the color, said Coralie. Any particular color? Is this permanent, he asked. No, it washes out over time. How about lime green, said Magic. Whoop, 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 girls. Put your paws down. Let's go this way. No, she's not invading your space. It's okay. How about lime green, said Magic. Coralie carefully picked up the dye in a bowl. She draped the cape over him so to, as not to get the dye everywhere when she used a paintbrush and applied it on his head carefully. The body of the cape had a zipper down the back so she could expose only the area she needed to color. She continued down his back until it was finished. Then she told him he needed to sit like that for 20 minutes before rinsing. And then he, she needed to gel and re-spike the green fur. She set the timer and moved on to the next. Kiera, it's your turn, pretty lady, said, said Coralie. Kiera walked over and sat on the princess bed. She stretched her paws out towards mm -hmm. Coralie and said, I'm ready for my petty. She started by trimming and buffing her nails. A short while later, the timer went off and Magic was ready for his rinse. He climbed into the sink and Coralie rinsed him with the hose. He watched as the green dye washed down the drain. All done, she said. He climbed out and sat on the chair where she re-spiked and dried his fur. She grabbed the mirror and showed him his new do. Awesome. Thanks, Coralie. Magic zoomed on over to Derecho and said, Check out the new duty, man. Wow, you look pretty cool, he said. Coralie went back over to finish Kiara's petty. She painted her nails a pretty shade of pink. Soon after, many of the residents wanted something done. Lucy, Pania, Asha, and Zelda all wanted petties, while Hensley wanted a Mr. T-type haircut, shaved on the sides and spiked in the center. It seemed there were two residents who opted out of the hair craze, and that was... Derecho and Ramsey. They just couldn't do it. Oh, come on, guys. Just get a facial or something, said Coralie. I need the practice. Ramsey decided he wanted a massage on his feet, which technically doesn't fall under the scope of a cosmetologist, and Derecho went for the facial. He sat in the chair as Coralie tilted it back, and then she put an avocado mask on him. She instructed him to close his eyes and relax for 15 minutes. How can I relax when I feel like a plate of nachos, he said. While Derecho sat, Coralie put Ramsey on his brown box and started rubbing his feet. Sit still, Rambo, she said. I can't. It tickles, he giggled. He bounced around wildly from being ticklish. She rubbed a little harder, hoping he would relax, but all he did was squirm and giggle. After a few hours, it looked like most of the residents had a day at the spa, but there was one more hairstyle she needed to practice, and that was a perm. Uh-oh. 
who could she get? There was another resident who didn't participate, and that oh, 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 oh and that was do you know who it was? Janie the cat dog. <laughs> Does anyone know where Janie is? asked Coralie. I'll go find her, said Zelda. She went to the kitty cabana where she was napping. She called her to wake up and asked if she wanted to participate in helping Coralie. Sure, what can I do, asked Janie. She wants to give you a perm, said Zelda. A perm? Yeah, it's a hairstyle. Okay, she said and went out to the main area. Here I am, Coralie. Are, are you going to give me a perm? Sure, why not? Coralie began by shampooing her fur and then towel drying her. She wanted the fur damp, but not wet. She got in the chair while Coralie mixed up the perming solution. P.U. What's that stink? asked Ramsey. It's the perm solution. She started by rolling the fur around tiny rollers. She was only going to do a few in each section so she would have some light fur and not come out looking like a poodle, or excuse me, a light curl, and not come out looking like a poodle. Coralie lightly spritzed the fur to keep it from completely drying. She applied the perm solution to each curl, being careful not to miss any. Next, the solution needed to remain on her fur for the specific time. When the time was up, she rinsed her fur using lukewarm water and leaving the curlers in place. She then applied the neutralizing solution to each curl, adding just enough to saturate each curl and save the rest. Next, Coralie carefully removed each curler and then massaged the remaining neutralizing solution into her fur. She then rinsed her fur and allowed it to air dry. After about a half hour, Janie's fur was completely dry, so Coralie lightly fluffed the curls with a brush to give it body. Wow, not bad, she said. Janie looked in the mirror, and although it was a different look, she liked it. Well, everybody, what do you think, she asked. Wow, you look pretty, they said. Nice job, Coralie. Whoops. Just then, she turned around and realized that she was so busy working on Janie's perm, uh-oh, that she forgot D-Man in the chair and his face mask hardened. <gasps> it looked like he fell asleep, said Coralie. De Rachel, time to wake up. Huh? What's going on, he asked. I need to get the face mask off you. Ouch, my face is stiff, he said. That's because I forgot you in the avocado hardened, said Coralie. Get this stuff off my face, please. I feel like a mummy. Look at the bright side. Your pores will be open and clean, she said. Yeah, they will look like the surface of the moon, said Derecho. Relax, D-Man. I'll wash it off. She brought him over to the sink and had him hang over the side. She turned on the water to get it lukewarm and then took the hose and blasted the avocado off. Whoa, easy, Coralie, don't drown me. There you go, good as new. Your face should feel smooth and refreshed, she said. He dried his face with a towel and could feel a difference. Wow, thanks. She took a minute to make sure that she practiced everything that could possibly be on the exam. I think I am all set, and thanks again to everyone who participated. I really appreciate it. When is the exam, asked Marilyn. Tomorrow, so I hope this all stays fresh in my mind. You're so smart, girl. The next morning, Coralie asked Mama Jackie for a ride to the Beauty Academy so she could take the exam. On the way, she said she was nervous and hoped that she would pass. Mama Jackie gave her words of encouragement and it helped to calm her down a bit. When they arrived, she wished her good luck and said she would be back after the exam to pick her up. Coralie went in and was ready to give it her best. The instructor called her name and handed her the written part of the test first, and then she would take the hands-on part. She sat with the test in front of her and couldn't believe it. She knew the answers to almost all the questions. That's because you studied. It seems all of her studying and practicing paid off. When she was finished, she approached the desk and handed the test back to the instructor. 
She put it in the scanning machine, and in seconds, it gave her the score. Coralie got a 95, a 95 on the written exam. Next, they went into the studio where she had to show she could perform the different techniques and procedures on mannequins. There were three salon chairs set up with mannequin bodies and each required a certain procedure. The first chair was for basic cutting. You had to demonstrate the different techniques of cutting, whether it was straight hair or curly. The second chair was for perming and highlighting, and the third chair was for facials, manicures, and petties. This part of the test took about three or four hours. Coralie was nervous, but she did a great job, and she passed the exam. She was now an official cosmetologist. They issued her a temporary license and said her official one would be mailed. When Mama Jackie returned to pick her up, Coralie couldn't be more excited. I did it, she said, I got my license. Mama Jackie was so proud of her. They drove back to FFRC, and when they arrived, all the residents greeted her at the door. Did you do it? Did you pass the exam, they asked. She smiled and held up her temporary license and said, I did it. Everyone was so proud of her. Suddenly, Spiker wanted his eyebrows trimmed since he had that Groucho Marx look going on, and Marilyn and Jesse wanted a pedicure. It looks, oh, Jesse, it looks like Corley is going to be busy keeping the residents looking their best. Maybe she could even open her own saloon, um, so her own salon, salon, someday. <laughs> she would call it positively beautiful. Oh, I like that name you picked. By Positively Beautiful by Coralie. Magic into Rachel asked her if she could spruce them up before each radio show, even though no one would see them. Maybe Mama Jackie could give her a closet to set up a hair salon in so she would have a place to work from, said to Rachel. Hey, that's a great idea, said Magic. Maybe D-Man and I could get our own dressing rooms too and eventually have our own TV shows. The whole idea was just so exciting and the possibilities were endless. Whoa, slow down, guys. One thing at a time, said Coralie. Just then, she had an idea. Since it is almost flip-flop weather, oh, she thought about giving Mama Jackie a pedicure for giving her a ride to the exam. Besides, she deserves it for all her hard work around the rescue center. It was Coralie's way of paying it forward and saying thank you. She was even going to give Papa Steve if she could trim if she could trim his mustache for him. The more Coralie thought about it, the more she saw this as an opportunity to help around the center. It would help everybody if they all worked together and shared what talents they have. After all, isn't that what it's all about? The end. And there's a tag here, Positively <clears throat> positively Beautiful by Coralie. Yeah, that is what it's all about, Coralie. Working together and sharing what we have, huh? And she's purring. Yeah. <laughs> Coralie, you're just the best. You're just the best, aren't you? So this next one will be Hensley. I'm going to stop a second and get a drink. Oh, I think I have a drink on my desk. Georgia sure does love the ping pong ball. Yes. It's been there for a week. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> put a lemon in it. Yeah. My New Year's resolution, drink one bottle of water a week. <laughs> <laughs> I do get water. I make my water juice every morning in my big quarantine purple mug that I have. I put a little lemon drops in this one. All right. Well, that was a good story, Coralie. You want to trade places with Spiker? Oh, no, with Hensley? She says, I think not. <laughs> I 
Hey, for all of you that don't haven't seen this yet, um, when Steve and I went to the store, we looked at coats for Jeannie. This is the only one they had. And I was telling the viewers earlier, I don't think this is her style. <laughs> it's kind of a little fancy smancy for her. She's a little plainer girl, but it's the only one they had. I told her if she doesn't like it, we could take this bow off. And then if she doesn't like this, we can take this off, maybe. Maybe not. But she's got to have a haircut. She's she. We won't be able to recognize her by spring if we don't give her one. I tried it on her the other day. It does fit her. <clears throat> I know. I only know one way to give a haircut to her, and that's a shave job. Oh, it's nice to see everybody on. It's a me. It's a small. It's a small. And it does fit her. It fits her nicely. <laughs> well, because I'm not, um, I think why poor, why poor Janie is because, um, yeah, I only know one way to shave and that's all the way down to the, down to the skin. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm always telling her I'm not a groomer, but I, I can shave it. We can do it for you. Yeah, maybe you can give Jeannie her haircut. Can you hear her purring by chance? She's really purring. She's a happy girl. Can you hear her? She's got the motor going. Okay, and I remember in another story it was referred to about Hensley being a paperology, the professor of paperology. And I should have caught that then. I hadn't read the initial story on that. So this one is Hensley, <clears throat> the professor of paperology. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Jackie spends too much time with Sphinx cats. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we're trying to make Janie a Sphinx dog. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Hensley, the professor of paperology. It seems that Mama Jackie is having a tough time holding on to colored paper these days. All of the colors are disappearing, but no one knows who is taking it. It seems there is a professor in the house, and he is using the paper to teach his class. Meet Professor Hensley, the professor of paperology. He looks adorable in his white lab type coat, complete with a pocket protector and a pair of glasses. I bet you didn't know that Hensley has a degree. He is a master of making things out of paper. Some call it a form of origami, but he calls it paperology, or the art of paper sculpting. Come join us as he teaches a class of this art to the FFRC residents. So that's what this story is about. One day, the FFRC gang wanted something fun to do, so they asked Professor Hensley to have an art class and teach them the art of paper. They figured it was better than laying around and sleeping all day, so he agreed. He set the residents up in Kitty Cabana room on the floor. He then went and <clears throat> raided Mama Jackie's office and took all the reams of different colored paper she had along with Rachel's favorite scotch tape, some pencils, round plastic lids, and a few pair of scissors. Professor Hensley stood up in front of the class and said, Today we will be learning how to make a paper rose. I chose this project because it will teach you the basics. Is everyone in agreement, he asked. They all nodded and were eager to begin. He lined the different colored paper in stacks on a small table and let each resident choose the color rose they wanted to make. Elma and Spiker picked a pink color. Lucy and Canvey chose a blue, while Coralie, Magic, and Ramsey picked red. Derecho, Vernon, and Marilyn chose yellow, and Kiera, Asha, and Pania chose white. He instructed the class to pay close attention and watch each step. He grabbed a piece of pink paper and using a plastic lid, traced a circle approximately four inches and cut it out. 
He then took the pencil and drew a spiral within the circle. Next, he cut out the spiral and then rolled the paper tightly in the spiral shape. He folded the spiral center to make a flat base for the rolled paper. Next, he let the rows uncoil to his preferred size and then taped the base, uh, base to the bottom of the rows. While Professor Hensley was teaching, Vernon decided he would be the class clown and fold his paper, his sheet of paper, into a pirate hat. <laughs> Ramsey started snickering when Vern put the hat on and said, I, matey, meet me want you oh i matey me want you to swab the deck professor hensley glanced up and just looked at vernon if you are going to disrupt the class vernon you can go stand in the corner for a time out he said everybody giggled after he showed the class step by step he let them give it a try they all had their paper in front of them and they picked up their plastic lid and traced it magic helped ramsey with his oh Magic's so nice that Ramsey isn't here. Alma drew a smiley face on hers. Spike drew two circles and made Mickey Mouse ears. Everybody laughed and was having fun. Okay, has everybody traced their lid onto the paper, asked Professor Hensley. He walked around and noticed some of them were drawing faces and Mickey Mouse ears. He just shook his head. Class, please stick to just tracing the circle. Next step is to draw the spiral within the circle. Marilyn <laughs> helped Lucy draw hers and soon they all helped each other because drawing the spiral wasn't all that easy. While Rachel drew his spiral, he walked his body around it with the same motion and got a little bit dizzy and fell to the floor. Is everybody all set with this step, he asked. Yes, we are ready, they answered. Okay, now take your scissors and carefully cut the spiral out. This part was going to be a little harder for some, so Professor Hensley asked that they all help each other with this step. Ramsey was ready to pick up the scissors when suddenly Magic zoomed over and said, I will cut that for you, Rambo. Spiker was ever so careful cutting his spiral and it came out almost perfect. Coralie looked at it as a lock of curls. <laughs> she had no problem cutting hers. Hey, Vern, we could cut a bunch of these, and you can be a pirate with curly hair, she said. Ha, ah, that's a good one, Coralie, said Vernon. After a few minutes, they were ready for the next step. Does anyone need any assistance still? asked Professor Hensley. Nope, we are all set, said Asha. Continuing on, now you want to roll the paper tightly into the spiral shape. They all started rolling the spiral tightly. Canvy used her pencil and rolled hers. Good thinking, Canvy, said Professor Hensley. Guys, don't be afraid to be creative in rolling this, he said. Just be sure that you roll the spiral tightly. Asha and Pania worked together and Derecho helped Lucy and Ramsey. Is everybody finishing rolling their spiral, asked Professor Hensley. Yes, they replied. So, let's review so far the steps completed. He paced back and forth in front of the class. He pushed his glasses up on his nose and put his pencil back in his pocket. The first step is pretty easy. It is just tracing the desired circle, size circle, using a lid or something round. Hey, can we trace a cat food can, asked Vernon. Sure, you can use a can of cat food. Just be sure it is at least four inches or larger. Whoa, that's a big can of food. The next two steps are a little more difficult. You have to draw the spiral and then cut it. It can take a bit of practice. Then we lightly roll, and I've emphasized tightly, oh, tightly roll, the spiral. It is important because this is where the rose takes its shape. So far, whoa. <laughs> I'm back here, girl. There you go. <laughs> so far, I am pleased with how well you have done, said Professor Hensley. Magic leaned over and whispered to Rachel and Ramsley. Hensley sure looks, looks cute as a brainy nerd. <laughs> Yeah, he even sounds like a professor, too, said Rachel. 
He reminds me of that cartoon Dexter's lab. <laughs> Ramsey laughed and said, I wonder if he has a microscope. Is something funny, guys? asked Professor Hensley. Nope, just enjoying your class, said Magic. Moving on, now you want to fold the spiral center to make a flat base for the rolled paper. What? They all look confused. Once you reach the center of the spiral, it will be difficult to roll it any further. Simply press the center of the spiral firmly. I repeat, firmly over the bottom of the base of the rolled paper. <laughs> Kiera raised her paw and asked if he could demonstrate that step again. He nodded and said, certainly. He picked up his rolls and showed them exactly how to do it. Please pick up your spiral and do the same. They, did you see her tail going? <laughs> they all attempted to do what he instructed, but it wasn't as easy as he, as he made it sound or look. Hmm, said to Rachel, something isn't right. He did exactly what he said, but it looked odd. Professor Hensley wandered over and looked at to Rachel's rose. Uh, it's upside down, D-man. You folded it backwards. Aha, uh -huh, that's it. Thanks. As he continued walking around, he was pretty impressed with everyone. The roses were really starting to take shape, and they were all talking amongst each other and having a good time. Attention class, said Professor Hensley. We are now up to the fun part of the project. Vernon put his pirate hat on again and said, Arr, are you going to walk the plank? The class bursted out laughing, and Professor Hensley just looked at Vernon and shook his head. Well, Vern, if you don't pass this class, you can always be a florist delivery boy. Very funny, he said. Marilyn told Vern to behave or no cuddle time. As I was saying, this is the part where the rose takes its, uh, its shape. Let the rose uncoil to your preferred size. Slowly release the pressure that you are using to hold the spiral together. This makes the rose gradually uncoil and become larger. Stop letting the rose unravel when it is the size you want and play, put a piece of tape rolled into a cylinder in the center of the flat base. The girls all helped each other with theirs while Ramsey got excited and let it go too fast and the rose, rose flew out of his paw. Whoops, lost mine, he said. Spiker caught it in midair. He went over to him and helped him re-roll it and then he would slowly let it uncoil until it was the size he wanted. Ready? Say when, Ramsey. When? Not yet, said Spiker. I haven't uncoiled it yet. You said say when. You're funny, Rambo. He gently released the pressure as Ramsey watched. He wanted a good sized rose for Mama Jackie. When, he shouted. Spiker stopped and taped it to the base. Meanwhile, Derechophobia Rachel's phobia kicked in. Did you know he had a phobia? He just stared at his rose. Darn, I gotta use the tape. Magic looked over and realized Rachel was having an issue. He zoomed over to help him. Do you notice how Magic's always helping everybody? You're okay, buddy. He, you okay, buddy, he asked. Rachel started to panic. Breathe, slowly. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out, phew. Thanks, Magic, I was starting to panic. I'll help you, D-Man. He took his rose and helped him uncoil it and tape it. There you go, is everything all right over there? Asked Professor Hensley. Uh, yes, I got it under control, said Magic. We got to get over this tape fear, D-Man. You and I will work on that. Okay, class, final step. Once your rose is attached to the base, you will want to press it firmly to the base, and then we will attach a stem. Professor Hensley passed out green paper to each of them. She, he showed them how to roll the paper into a stem and attach it to the base of the rose. There you have it, a paper rose, he said. After he demonstrated it, they all took their green paper and rolled it into a stem. They took a piece of tape and firmly attached it to the base of the roses. You all did a great job for your first time, and that includes you, Vern. He just grinned. Do you all know what you are going to do with your roses, he asked. Lucy spoke up and said, Oh, we 
should put them together and make a bouquet for Mama Jackie. What an awesome idea, they said. Coralie gathered around everybody's rose and arranged them in a bouquet. Wow, that's pretty. Great job, Coralie, they said. Later that afternoon, Mama Jackie was doing some office work, so they all went into her office to present her with the bouquet. DeRacho took it and went up to her. Mama Jackie looked and said, Hi guys, what's going on? She asked. He reached up and handed her the bouquet. Professor Hensley taught us how to make paper roses, so we decided to make a bouquet and give it to you. Aw, that is so sweet. Thank you. Vernon stepped forward with his pirate hat on and looked at her and said, Aye, and I'm going to swab your desk. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Good story, Cindy. Good story. I like it. Hmm. Yay. And I know, I won't give secrets away yet, but I know Cindy's working on another really cool story. Yeah. What'd you think of that, Coralie? So we got 23 minutes. Does anybody have any New Year's resolutions you're making? And thank you, Cindy. I've got one. You have a New Year's resolution? I'm not going to work anymore and I'm not going to work any less. You're not, <laughs> you're not going to work anymore and not work any less. <laughs> I think you almost gave Jackie a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Magic? Magic, you want your syringe? I thought uh, Lucy might like that short legged, short string. And I got this to keep Camby active. Oh. Can't be busy. She was, and uh, Lucy. Are you she, she was kicking the syringes and then she like flipped what, out what and she was thought? going after it now. Right. She likes it. PCH cats never underestimate them, right? Never underestimate. What's my New Year's resolution? Take yeah. Saturday and Sunday off. To, to get this virus away. Um, I don't well, know. I think this year, if 2021 gets better and this doggone COVID goes away, I. it's not a resolution, but it's a thankful thing. I will be so thankful to have uh, visitors again. Um, it's been since March that we've had any public in here other than uh, maintenance people. <laughs> oh, I will, Susan. I know you like Ramsey. And He's in the bed. He's in bed. On the bed. I always, I always say bed. one of my things, and I do this every year, is to find the best homes possible for our kitties. And um, I have to tell you though, the the um, homes that we've been presented with have been so awesome. Oh, that's good, Vince. Um, the homes have just been showing to us here or just have are here and I'm always so tickled and and I don't feel uncomfortable with any of them it's just really wonderful homes and that's what it's all about and I love it when they get back with me and say how fast the kitties have um, adjusted to their new surroundings and how much they love them because we love them all don't we yeah, we just want them in their their homes. We have the the some of the cats we have left are going to be a little tougher, um, but I'm I'm confident we're going to be presented with some homes that will be awesome. You heard from Sparkle? Um, no, I haven't yet. They, but they will. Sparkle and Saban. Yeah. Oops. Oh gosh, I about whacked my head off. Oh, well, thank you, everybody. So, hey, how about pop, popping up there where where you're all from, what state or what country? Glory B's new mommy was on chat earlier. Oh, yeah, she was. She wasn't. What did she say? Tell me. 
that she was Lori B's mom. Uh -huh. <laughs> Did she say how good she's doing or anything? Um, I wasn't on that long, so I didn't see oh. any comments. Your Pania, it's coming. The ball is hanging. I know you can't see it, but it is in there. It is, and it's got bonito flakes, bonito flakes in it. Oh, I gotta read these off. Texas. Whoa, oh, wait, I missed Canada, Michigan, UK. Wow, Illinois, Michigan, Nebraska, UK, Florida, Arizona, Toledo, Arkansas. Whoa, <laughs> I can't read them that fast. <laughs> 600 people watching, the best of 2021 wow. to all. Wow. Yep, <laughs> Missouri, Canada, Maryland, USA, Netherlands, UK, Chicago, Illinois, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Delaware. Isn't that amazing? Oregon, another Florida, New Jersey, San Francisco, Michigan, Illinois, South Dakota, New York, L.A. Wow. Oh, don't Lost get Girl. Don't, don't, don't get a D. Lost Girl says around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from Tennessee for, um, for Donna? Oh, come on, guys. Somebody is New York, U.K., New Zealand, Siberia, wow. Dutchie. Dutchie. Wow. North Carolina, yay, North Carolina, K CA, New York, please, from, K oops, wow, down under, Tennessee, Channel Song, Woo! oh, jeez, <laughs> Archibald, yay, oh, yay, is that Jim, uh -huh. okay. another North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Oh, Susie S. says she'll move to Tennessee for you. Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Washington. VA. Any Washington for Barb? Oklahoma, New Hampshire, Metro Detroit. Oh, boy, there's one. Map. The map. Indiana. Yep. Iowa. Might be moving to Oregon. Beautiful state. Jamie is in Tennessee. Ooh. Indiana. France, Kansas, there's another Canada, San Francisco, Japan, wow. Is Russia on tonight? Is Russia on tonight? They've been on the past couple of Fridays. Oh, Sandra's moving to Tennessee. Wow, you guys are awesome. Is Are there any Russia folks on? Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Highland, Indiana, Las Vegas. I was going to say, Las Vegas was on earlier. Martin's from North Pole. <laughs> Here's to a better 2021. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh thank you. Yvonne, she told me she was going to really try. Who, Yvonne? Yeah. I don't know. Is Yvonne on? Washington, rainy day. Rainy day's Washington for Barb. Oh, yep. awesome. Yep. What part of Washington? What part of Washington, rainy day? Redmond, Kirkland. France. There's a France, New Hampshire. Wow. Wow. Oh, Coralie's got the most beautifulest eyes. Aw. You all are awesome. Central Valley, Pittsburgh, Orlando, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I haven't seen, haven't seen Yvonne yet. South of Seattle, Barb. <laughs> Fran's going to move to FFRC. Rural North Carolina. I love North Carolina. Brazil. Oh, the great oh, state oh. of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> Stockton. I have a question about the members. Oh, out here. Ooh, I wonder which one. Um, I think I got my shirt at Shipshawana. <laughs> Gig, Gig Harbor, Washington? Yep. Barb, do you know where I have relatives is? in Gig Harbor. Wow. Kisses okay. from France. Where are you from? <laughs> I've had my feet planted in defiance my whole life. But I have, I have visited quite a bit of the United States. Brazil. Wow. Thanks, everybody. Orlando. I know we've got a lot of new people on because when I yeah. got my emails, it's like, wow. 
quite amazing. So this is our only kitty left, and I have people um, interested in him. But you gotta quit biting. No biting. He's a little pistol. He he, he is shorty? a little pistol. Are you shorty? Um, somebody's coming. I've got one in particular that's adopted from us before. That is interested especially. Geez, we must be getting close if you're coming out. <laughs> and some fruit. Yeah, we got lots of fruit and Vegetable. veggies there, Stevie. Take off mask, I can't eat. Well, you're allowed to take it off. To yeah, eat. to eat. <laughs> is Sonia on? Is Sonia on? So, Sonia's probably partying. Sonia? Oh, I don't know. That's this year is very different, isn't it? No big parties. I don't have a clue. They still can't come across the bridge, so. Down you go, little babe. It's it's getting closer, Pania. I've got Joy Joy playing. Oh. Joy Joy's playing over here, and Camby's playing well, down he, here. He's got the stick. <laughs> Not playing fair. I know you're okay. Doesn't he make your neck hot sometimes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is the time of year where where the kitties all all get their homes pretty quickly. We've got a lot of adoptions in November, October, November, December. And uh, now it gets down to like the adults. Hey, Steve. 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 They're saying happy birthday to you. Did you hear? They're saying happy birthday to you. Well, happy birthday. Yep. <laughs> yep. Steve's, Steve's birthday is 1 1, January he wants 1. In. Papa, yep. he wants in. <laughs> he walks away from me. Oh, he wanted to go play with Hopi. So we're working on, um, the cats I'm working on really hard now is Chaz. Chaz, oh, Chaz is hard because he's a lover bugger, but he sometimes doesn't want new people to do much with him yet. So we have to work on that. C-Dot we're working on. C-Dot is a hopeless case. C-Dot, I really am working hard on. C-Dot is not going anywhere, Jackie. <laughs> Lately, when we've had people here looking at kitties, I put him in the in the welcome room so he can get used to other people. But so far, it hasn't been working yet. Um, Zasha, I think, should be very adoptable. She's a lover bugger, and she's got a great um, <laughs> she's he's she's got a great purr. She loves to have her belly rubbed. Um, Eloise, I think we'll be able to we'll be able to find a home for, and um, well, Maribo, Maribo also. My clip has caught me. Oh no. And um, then we have I already have somebody interested in um, little. Rocky. Uh, well, no. Um, oh, who? Miles. Miles, the teeny tiny little baby, which of course we won't do pursue that yet for a while till he gets bigger. And also, as somebody's already asking me about Ringo as well. So, it, was, it was an R word, Jackie. It was an R word, yeah. yeah I didn't have it so, right. I think they want you to sing a song, Donna. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I heard. I heard it said. Donna's a good singer. No, I'm not. She can. She can belt them out. What song were you singing the other day for us? Uh, I don't know. You know I can't remember nothing. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, here. Play this. I like cat meow. Oh, did it really? Uh, yes. Uh, you okay, Elma? We won't do that.
that again, Romeo. Huh? No. You're, you're all right. I'm sorry. That is okay. You didn't know. We'll get our, we'll get the chicken ready. Yeah, I'll let that sound out. Yeah. Uh, we'll get your chicken ready. I asked you, 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 I asked
Control of the ball. It's coming, kitties. Tell us when. How many Oops, seconds? It's 12 o'clock. There comes the ball, guys. Look at Chance. I can't get my finger out of there. <laughs> there, Jackie. Now? Give us a countdown. Well, they're going by this other one. Yeah, we're going by the other one here. I'm just going by <laughs> Ohio. The seconds are gone. 
Here comes the there's, ball, there's, guys. There's blowers in there. Oh, 29, 28, 28 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. You might have to get under it more. Okay. I remember because you got to pull it down almost straight. Okay. How many more? Ten. Is everybody waving to the music? Yeah, pretty. Happy New Year from Australia. Yep, Coralie has some chicken.
lack of food. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> All right, is everybody happy now? Bye, Bye Donna. Do, 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 do. Who's singing that? Julie Andrews. Oh, of course. Here's some more. There's some more to do there, Alma. Oh, thank you all for being with us. Oh, as important as the kitties are to us all, it's also wonderful that we've made so many friendships. It's helped us get through the year, hasn't it? <laughs> well, Happy New Year to everybody. And even though we haven't got to meet most of you personally, we love you all. We certainly do wish you all a happy, happy 2021. The kitties have, it's uh, Snackers and Chicken and Bonito Flakes. Good. We're glad you all got to join us. Yep. Yeah, that's what I think too. Our FFRC nation is super important to us. How many did we end up having on then um, at midnight? I don't know. Does uh, Mods, Jim, do you know how many we had to have on or did have on at midnight? Seven hundred plus. Holy baloney. <laughs> seven fifty five over seven hundred. Wow. <laughs> seven eighty one. Seven eighty one. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Glad you all could join us. You know we wouldn't be what we are here today without you. Yep, you you make you have you have always made this place possible for us, but this year in particular, you have definitely made this year possible. I still remember so well, and I've said this before, when I put those closed signs up with much tears, because I did not want to do that. I remember you said I was going to do it tomorrow, and I was like, no. And I didn't do it. Yeah, uh-uh. Well, finally got a little bit scared, and so we had to do it. I said it only for a couple of weeks. And how long it's been. Who would have ever thought? Thank you to our mods, too. We have the best mods ever. Yep, best, best mods ever. Best admins, best chatters, best lurkers. Appreciate y'all. Oh, I love this song. <laughs> I'm going to play the DJ tonight. <laughs> Lean on me. That's what you guys always tell me. Yeah, lean on me. We've gone through some rough, rough times here over the many, many years, and you folks make it possible. Let me lean on ya. Yeah, thank you. Brennan, what are you gonna eat in What are you doing? What's he doing? Oh. <laughs> Best song ever. To the end of COVID.
sorry, I blew that horn. I won't do that ever again. <laughs> I just love him. He's just one of the best.
first bath of the year. Oh, no. <laughs> Lose. That's two weeks in a row. Yep. Yep. Gotta do what we gotta do. Hey, Barb, will you turn the hot water on so it starts warming up? Oh. Oh, thank you, Barb. Okay, there you go. Now you're dry as shit. What song is this? This is the angel's calling. Oh. It will make you cry.
what I was afraid it was. No, no. Okay. That horn. Oh no, here he is. Oh, he got deterred. He got deterred. How come you're over here and not with Auntie Mary? Because I already gave her a kiss, oh. he said. Alright, let me go talk to Alma. I haven't talked to Alma yet. Do you need another bed down here or are you guys okay? Yep, you too. Where's Janie? Where's Janie? I only took her out once. There you are. Yeah, thank you, Mama. Are you sleeping? Yeah, that's my New Year's resolution. I will never blow a horn again. Yeah, I scared poor babies. This one we turn off. Oh, back right. there. Yeah. Um, I turned off the back thumpers room so Ringo could see. Okay. And I turned off the Palmar and I downed it on the front thumpers. Okay. So she could. Because usually I turn it off and if I, if there's a cat there, I flip that little switch on the yeah, wall. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Okay, that way. Um, I just wasn't sure. Because she's way up high, she can get down there. Oh. Yeah, to throw it away. When I went back there. Rachel's forgiven me. Yeah, we threw that we threw that horn away. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he now? Love y'all. Nighty night. He he's right over there. He's just oh, he's okay. kind of calm and relaxed now. And oh, you, you we're ready gonna to pee. we're gonna leave you stay up, okay? He's he's looking for a rug to pee on. He might be. <laughs> I might have to pick that one up. 